morning, Houston. It's time to find out what's happening in our Houston area. Don Nelson and Jan Glenn have news and information important to you and your family. Doug Brown's weather will help you plan your day. Now, good morning, Houston. And there you see, oh, it's cold for everybody outside today. There you see what is happening as uh, we get ready to go into the second day of winter, actually. A virtual winter wonderland mm -hmm. over Houston, Texas. You know, we haven't had snow here since January of 1985 when we got 1.7 inches of snow. It looks like we will see obviously some light accumulations of this stuff. You got here at 5 o'clock this morning. I was late running in here because I had trouble with the traffic. If you're going out, and I'm sure Frank had to deal with this too, you have to drive for everybody else, not just right. yourself, because cars are slipping and sliding out there. It is very treacherous. Everyone who's coming to the station has said, tell them it's dangerous mm -hmm. out there, and it is. And remember, if your car starts to slide to the right, turn into that spin. Turn I to the heard right. you say that on the 7 o'clock news this morning, mm -hmm. and because you said that, the car in front of me started spinning, and then I hit the brakes, which you don't do, no, and then I started no. spinning, but I turned over towards the spin. And you corrected spin, it. And I corrected it. That is what is happening. You're seeing that right now. This was a... That's the corner of Buffalo Street and earlier this morning. Mm -hmm. And you can see it is slow going, and this isn't an overpass. You can imagine the overpasses and the bridge is very icy and very dangerous. And as you just mentioned, if you get to an overpass, people have a tendency to say, okay, I'm going to stop and then take it easy. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's, that is just the kiss right there. Mm -hmm. You have to keep going over that bridge and try to negotiate it as best you can because uh, when you put on the brakes, that locks things up and that starts your slide. Okay, now I drove in about 16 miles an hour this morning, but uh, we talked to Lewis Knight, our 6 a.m. producer and photographer. Mm -hmm. He said that he started at at 5.30 this morning, and there were only 10 cars on the freeway, on the yeah. Southwest Freeway, and he was the only one that made it. He saw three of them crash right in front of him, yeah, and people were slipping and sliding, and he was the only one, and he was driving two miles an hour. Yeah, there have been a lot of wrecks uh, all across the area, minor and major accidents, and a number of closings, which we'll tell you about in a little bit. Tell us about the weather right now. Well, it's, <laughs> I think we can expect this system to continue with us until about 2 or 3 this afternoon. I've been on the phone with the weather service and we're sort of all in agreement that the system is moving east at about 35 miles an hour, which means it is moving away from us. It is moving toward Louisiana, but it will probably be another 5 hours before this precipitation begins to taper off. The key is what's here is going to stay. It's not going to get above freezing until Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. if then. It may not be until Monday. So we have very cold air that is slid in here now. Now, and that is going to keep what is frozen frozen so it's not going to change any and uh, that's going to make mm -hmm. problems uh, particularly hazardous on the roads we're going to have to wait until the sand trucks get out there mm -hmm. and start sanding the roads and of course the big trucks and traffic alone will tr try to crush the ice and, and it will help things and do not uh, think that because you see an area on the highway that looks like there is no snow on it Maybe there is no snow, but mm. there could be some, uh, still some sleet or freezing rain that has just accumulated. And although it looks clear, it's just still slippery. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we are going with AAA out in our garage. We have a car all set up, ready to show you exactly what's going to be happening with your car during the freezing temperatures and how to take care of it. Also, we have our home handyman, Jim Brown, joining us. He is getting ready, as we see him right now, in the studio where it's nice and warm, and he will show you how to take care of all those pipes, and, and if you do have freezing pipes, this frozen pipes this morning, how to take care mm -hmm. of that as well. First, we want to go way south, and that is to Melanie Lawson, who is standing by on our phone lines for an update on what is happening in Panama. Good morning, Melanie. Good morning, Frank and Jan. How are you all doing? Good morning. Fine. We are right now in the capital city of Costa Rica. We're in San Jose, which is actually to the north of Panama. And just to give you a little bit of background on Costa Rica, this is really considered to be the Switzerland of <laughs> Central America because it's always had a very neutral stance and obviously a very volatile region. For instance, they have no standing army here. They just have a small police force. And the joke around here is that uh, each person is only given one bullet, which just gives you some idea of the very peaceful nature of this country. But obviously the folks here are watching the events in Panama with a great deal of interest and concern because they are expecting many Panamanians and Americans to come across the border into Costa Rica. However, that really has not yet materialized. We've heard that Noriega's forces, uh, that many troops loyal to Noriega, are still patrolling the border between the two countries and not allowing, in many cases, Americans and British citizens to come across. However, the border has been basically wide open for everyone else up to now. Many Panamanians have come over and then turned around and gone back home and decided to just kind of wait things out. 
we are going to try to get to the border at some point today. Uh, that is not always easy from this part of, uh, of Costa Rica, but we are going to try to get down and see if we can indeed uh, talk to some of those folks. What are people saying about Noriega? What are the comments that you're hearing there? Well, actually, the Costa Ricans are delighted with the American action that was taken against Noriega. Many of them have long viewed him as a very, very dangerous element in this part of the world. And they say he has not only tried to make the folks in Panama do what he wants to do, he has tried to indeed be a dictator throughout Central America. So they were glad to see the American troops invade Panama and run him out. The concern now, of course, is that he be found and uh, dealt with accordingly. But I even had one gentleman tell me that if Noriega were to show up here, which is a fairly unlikely possibility at this point, but they say if he were indeed to show up in Costa Rica, he would be immediately extradited to the United States to stand trial on drug trafficking charges. So they are no fans of Noriega and would like to see this all brought to an end. Melanie, you say they're expecting a number of refugees to come from Panama and cross the border. They're fairly welcoming, I would think, to those refugees. Yes, as a matter of fact, this is a very middle class, very well-to-do country as Latin American countries go, uh, and the Costa Ricans are very generous. They, as I mentioned, they are also very peaceful and really pride themselves on being a place where the rest of uh, the region can come when they need help. So yes, they are fairly willing to deal with whatever refugees come in, with, whether they be American or Panamanian. But at this point, we have not seen great numbers of people streaming across the borders into Panama. I mean, into Costa Rica, out of Panama. But indeed, they would be here to help them out. There is a Costa Rican Red Cross and an immigration office, and really an arm of uh, the United Nations Committee on, uh, on Refugees. And so they are more than willing to help out whoever needs help. OK, Melanie, thanks for joining us this morning and telling us what is going on down there. Of course, I'm sure you will have reports again at 6 and 10 on the news. Yes. All right. Thank you, Jan. Frank. Be All careful, righty. Melanie. And coming up in just a moment, we will be talking with Wayne Dolcefino at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio. Find out what is happening with our, our injured. So stay with us, and we'll be right back. Discover the most beautiful accessories at Blum's, like this original cap at Monte. Anywhere else, you pay $225. At Blum's, only 85 should your name be on this envelope? It should if you or someone you love is age 50 to 80, and it will be addressed to you if you call now for this important information. Free information about a life insurance policy designed especially for men and women age 50 to 80. Life insurance with no physical examination and no medical questions. You cannot be turned down regardless of your health or for any reason. And your premium will be $6.95 a month and will never increase. Colonial Penn Life Insurance Company wants to send you the important information in this envelope, and it's free. So if you are age 50 to 80 and thought it would be difficult to buy life insurance, shouldn't you call now? Here's the number. For free information in the mail, call 1-800-392-2800. This is a free call, 1-800-392-2800. Car, giving you some advice a little bit later in the show, but before we do that, we want to go to Fort Sam Houston, where Wayne Dolcefino is in San Antonio, and everybody's curious, Wayne, why did you move from Lackland Air Force Base to Fort Sam Houston? What's happening? Well, well Jan, there are two military hospitals. The West Loop southbound over Hempstead is closed, and the Lynchburg Ferry is closed. Doesn't show any signs of letting up immediately, and hopefully, uh, by mid-afternoon, we should start to see this precipitation taper off. The problem is the temperatures aren't going to get above freezing anytime soon, so what is there is going to stay there. You can see folks having problems as we speak. We've had a number of calls about Jim's advice on the antifreeze in the washing machine. Just put the quart of antifreeze in the washing machine. You don't mix it with anything because there's already water in the washing machine pump and that will supply the mixture liquid that's needed for that. So you just put a quart of antifreeze into the washing machine, put it on spin cycle, 
for about 10 seconds. Here are the numbers that we've got for you. Intercontinental, woo, 16 degrees. Uh, here at the station, 26, but dropping rapidly. Uh, downtown, 15 degrees. Hobby is at 19. All of these areas reporting sleet, snow, ice pellets, and freezing rain. Barometer, 30, 70, and rising. Winds are out of the north at 17, and the humidity is at 80%. Satellite picture then, here we go with that. Notice what is in this area here, and that is strictly blue. It is not precipitation. It is just very cold cloud tops. The satellite senses infrared heat. It's not getting much heat. It's getting a lot of cold because this is the coldest air that we have seen in many, many years. An Arctic outbreak that has driven itself all the way down into Texas, obviously, and we have an upper-level disturbance in southern Texas. What that means is that we're getting some moisture flowing in from the Gulf, combining with the cold air, and so the two are meeting right along the southeastern Texas Gulf Coast, and as a result, we have snow, ice, freezing rain, and a winter weather advisory that will continue for the rest of the day. Winter storm warning from uh, around Lufkin, right on down through Beaumont, Port Arthur, and Houston, south on to Brownsville, and then uh, west to Austin as far as Del Rio. In the northern part of the state, they're not getting any snow problems, but it is very cold there, and they're looking at wind chill advisories, minus 15 to minus 30, so if you are heading toward Dallas or in that direction, better take a coat because it's going to be cold everywhere. Tonight, looking at sub-zero temperatures from Waco to Abilene to Lubbock to the Panhandle, right at zero from Midland and San Angelo. Teens and single-digit numbers for the rest of the area. We won't warm up much tomorrow. We're looking for a high tomorrow of 27 and a low of 16. Here's your three-day forecast for today. A winter storm warning in effect. Temperatures dropping rapidly into the teens. Look for snow, freezing rain, and sleet to continue through much of the afternoon, probably beginning to clear hopefully about 3 or 4 o'clock this afternoon, but then the roads will remain fairly treacherous. We'll be back with more of Good Morning Houston after this word. Today on Eyewitness News at 6. The hunt continues for Noriega and U.S. forces work to restore order in Panama. Reports from Melanie Lawson on the situation. Also, winter makes a chilling entrance, sending temperatures in the Houston area plunging. And if you haven't done your Christmas shopping yet, you'd better get busy because time is running out. These stories and more today on Eyewitness News at 6 here on Channel 13. Sport Report is a great reason to try U.S. Videotel free. Hook up our terminal to your phone and keep up with your teams. Coming soon, a game where you guess the next play in the game you're watching yeah, on TV. Right. Or use it for news and entertainment. Call 240-5454 now. And for 60 days, try all our basic services free. After 60 days, it's only $14.95 a month on your Southwestern Bell telephone bill. So grab... Tonight, Johnny's got Steve Martin. And I would appreciate it if you would just leave me alone because I'm very angry. What's the problem? And I'm not in the mood for any of your questions. Oh, well, on late night, Dave gets really festive with new improved dangerous toys. Wow. If you're a bulb like we are, well, simply call GE Chairman Robert C. Wright at Home Collect. At Academy. Huffy Pro Slam Fiberglass Backboard, $49.99. Spalding NBA Basketball, $19.99. Academy for Performance. Don't miss the McDonald's Christmas Parade Saturday morning at 9 on Channel 2. Channel 2, KPRC TV. Now, Channel 2 News Nightcast. Oh, it is bitterly cold tonight as an Arctic cold front leaves Houston deep in the deep freeze. And it's treacherous, too. Work crews are out, as you can see, throwing sand and gravel on icy bridges and overpasses around town. Good evening. Ron and Jan are off this Friday night, which is perhaps one of the coldest nights Houston has ever had. And it is not going to get above freezing until Sunday at the very earliest. Jack Cato has been out in the weather tonight, and he's joining us from downtown. Jack? I'll tell you, there's not anybody out here tonight that doesn't have to be. That's a McDonald's across the street here at Main and Gray, and it's usually open till midnight. They closed up early and sent everybody home, and that's the way it is all over town. But we did find a few people out and about. City and state crews were shoveling out a mixture of sand and salt on some of those icy spots. But it wasn't anything like it was this afternoon. 
Since early this morning, there have been over 325 fender bender accidents, but only a dozen accidents with injuries. That's less than half there usually are on a regular Friday afternoon. There were no big crowds at the shopping malls, but there were shoppers. And because this weather gives me the Christmas Eve spending money mood. <laughs> you guys, this is not cold. Go to Oklahoma, that's where it's cold. You're shopping on the coldest night of the year. I know. <laughs> I must be crazy, too. <laughs> it was a contrast. Downtown, where there are usually hundreds of people on the streets on a Friday night, it was deserted. The Metro buses were running empty. This driver said he'd made the last two runs with no passenger. Now, the biggest crowd we found is right here at the Trailways bus station, and it's packed. About 12 buses are going to leave in the next 45 minutes, and they're going to go to places all over Texas. But just to give, tell you, if you want to take a bus to New York, there's one leaving in about five minutes, and you'll get to New York about 12 noon on Sunday. If you want to go to L.A. for warmer weather, you can go out there, and uh, you can get there about 5.20 in the morning on Sunday morning. But the thing about all these people here, they're going to be home for Christmas, and some of them are going to be a little bit warmer than we are here, maybe some of them colder. Bill, uh, that's the story. Everybody's inside. They're just not going to be out in this cold weather. Well, you're one of the only people outside, and tough and crusty as you are, Jack. <laughs> it's too cold for you, even. You better get inside. That's Jack Kidder reporting live from downtown. <laughs> Doug is joining oh. us now to tell us just how low the temperatures are going to get this weekend. Were those his ears or was that an earmuff? <laughs> I think that was a part of his hat that came down <laughs> The over scarf his back there. Well, as uh, Bill already pointed out, we should get above freezing maybe around noon on Sunday. But that's an awful long time to stay below freezing. We're going to have a lot of problems with pipes. And unfortunately, more than likely, there'll be some problems with fires as well. Already the temperature is 15 degrees at Intercontinental Airport. Th that's the real temperature. A wind chill factor at Hobby Airport is 21 below zero. And even in downtown Galveston right now, the temperature is 19. At least the winds are dying down some, but don't expect very much of a warming trend, even though tomorrow we'll have sunshine, and that'll make it seem a lot nicer. <laughs> okay, we'll join you a little bit okay. later. Planes are flying in and out of both airports tonight. Some flights, however, are being delayed because of the freezing weather across the country. Catherine Smith with more tonight on getting around and out of the city. This may look like Denver, but it's a snow-covered Houston Intercontinental, and it's causing some problems. Just ask this traveler who missed her connecting flight. The plane was on the ground. They did, were late leaving an hour. They delayed it because of the ice here. Just getting to the airport was difficult. Oh, it was pretty rough. There was a lot of snow and stuff, but we were, we were running late. We have to be at our plane in 20 minutes, so we're going to rush out there real quick. They left the driving to the professionals, but in this weather, even the cab drivers slow down. The problem is getting to the point where you got to go pick them up. Get in there, slipping and sliding. Customers were waiting up to two hours just for cabs to pick them up. We're running short and we are overloaded with the cabs right now. A lot of people down here have never seen streets like this, and they're just you have to be overly cautious and uh, take your time. It's better to get there late than not at all. It was slow going for anyone trying to get anywhere on Houston roadways. The wait for Metro buses was often long and cold. <gasps> I thought I left this in New York about 20 years ago. This morning, the Arctic blast closed all but one runway at Intercontinental Airport, and some planes are having to be de-iced. Several airports without de-icing equipment have had to be closed completely. And it's the cold weather at those other airports that is causing most of the delayed or canceled flights here. Houston airport officials say if we don't get any more freezing rain or snow, they should be able to handle the holiday crowds. Catherine Smith, Channel 2 News, Nightcast. Many of you learned firsthand today that this hard freeze is making heavy demands on the light company. Tonight, HLNP is asking for a voluntary cutback on electric use to prevent further outages. There have been some. And the light company says keeping the Christmas lights off this weekend is a good place to start. Some 10,000 residents spent part of this freezing day without power, and that meant without heat unless they had a fireplace. The outages were mostly in the Greens Point and Sugarland areas. HLNP says all the power is restored tonight. And the power struggle continues in Panama tonight, and there is word from the Pentagon 2,000 more American troops are headed there. Fighters loyal to Noriega launched a bold daylight attack today on the headquarters of U.S. military forces. The Dignity Battalions, as they are called, also tried to assassinate... The L's at Galleries Dial and Nitrous deliver you new Steely Posturepedic Police Set tonight in an unmarked sleigh. Call Gallery Furniture's Dial and Nitrous, 692-1111. Ho, 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 save you money. Gallery Furniture's Dial a Mattress. Call 692-1111.
neither rain, nor sleet, nor snow, nor even caked on mud can stop the new Pulsator by Turbo Wash. The Pulsator creates a more powerful stream that blasts away even the toughest dirt in just seconds. The turbocharged Pulsator is easy to use and safe for even the most expensive finishes. The perfect Christmas gift. Available at Kmart, Family Dollar Stores, Target, and Ace Hardware. Fiesta wants to thank you for shopping with them throughout the year and wishes you a happy, safe holiday and a new year filled with prosperity and blessings for you and your family. Looking for more of the big chill again tonight and tomorrow morning. HLMP spokesperson Jerry Konigsberg tells us we may have more electricity rationing again tomorrow. She says to avoid that is to try and use as little electricity as possible tonight and tomorrow. Hopefully we can avoid those rolling power outages and hopefully, well, we'll just keep our fingers crossed. Huh? Sure will. 8,000 people without power right now. And we're going to take another look at this situation and have a report for you tonight at 10 o'clock. We'll see you then. Good night. but it will probably be another five hours before this precipitation begins to taper off. The key is what's here is going to stay. It's not going to get above freezing until Sunday afternoon, if then. It may not be until Monday. So we have very cold air that is slid in here now, and that is going to keep what is frozen frozen. So it's not going to change any, and uh, that's going to make problems uh, particularly hazardous on the roads. We're going to have to wait until the sand trucks get out there mm -hmm. and start sanding the roads. And, of course, the big trucks and traffic alone will tr try to crush the ice and, and uh, will help things. And do not uh, think that because you see an area on the highway that looks like there is no snow on it, maybe there is no snow, but mm -hmm. there could be some uh, still some sleet or freezing rain that has just accumulated. And although it looks clear, it's just still slippery. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we are going with AAA out in our garage. We have a car all set up, ready to show you exactly what's going to be happening with your car during the freezing temperatures and how to take care of it. Also, we have our home handyman, Jim Brown, joining us. He is getting ready, as we see him right now, in the studio where it's nice and warm, and he will show you how to take care of all those pipes, and, and if you do have freezing pipes, this frozen pipes this morning, how to take care mm -hmm. of that as well. First, we want to go way south, and that is to Melanie Lawson, who is standing by on our phone lines for an update on what is happening in Panama. Good morning, Melanie. Good morning, Frank and Jan. How are you all doing? Good morning. Fine. We are right now in the capital city of Costa Rica. We're in San Jose, which is actually to the north of Panama. And just to give you a little bit of background on Costa Rica, this is really considered to be the Switzerland of <laughs> Central America because it's always had a very neutral stance and obviously a very volatile region. Good morning, Houston. 
It's time to find out what's happening in our Houston area. Don Nelson and Jan Glenn have news and information important to you and your family. Doug Brown's weather will help you plan your day. Now, good morning, Houston. And there you see, oh, it's cold for everybody outside today. There you see what is happening as uh, we get ready to go into the second day of winter, actually. A virtual winter wonderland mm -hmm. over Houston, Texas. You know, we haven't had snow here since January of 1985 when we got 1.7 inches of snow. It looks like we will see obviously some light accumulations of this stuff. You got here at 5 o'clock this morning. I was late running in here because I had trouble with the traffic. If you're going out, and I'm sure Frank had to deal with this too, you have to drive for everybody else, not just right. yourself, because cars are slipping and sliding out there. It is very treacherous. Everyone who's coming to the station has said, tell them it's dangerous mm -hmm. out there, and it is. And remember, if your car starts to slide to the right, turn into that spin. Turn I to the heard right. you say that on the 7 o'clock news this morning, mm -hmm. and because you said that, the car in front of me started spinning, and then I hit the brakes, which you don't do, no, and then I started no. spinning, but I turned over towards the spin. And you corrected spin, it. And I corrected it. That is what is happening. You're seeing that right now. This was a... That's the corner of Buffalo shot Street, earlier this morning. Mm -hmm. And you can see it is slow going, and this isn't an overpass. You can imagine the overpasses and the bridge is very icy and very dangerous. And as you just mentioned, if you get to an overpass, People have a tendency to say, okay, I'm going to stop and then take it easy. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's, that is just the kiss right there. Mm -hmm. You have to keep going over that bridge and try to negotiate it as best you can because uh, when you put on the brakes, that locks things up and that starts your slide. Okay, now I drove in about 16 miles an hour this morning, but uh, we talked to Lewis Knight, our 6 a.m. producer and photographer. Mm -hmm. He said that he started at, at 5.30 this morning and there were only 10 cars on the freeway, on the yeah. Southwest Freeway, and he was the only one that made it. He saw three of them crash right in front of him yeah, and people were slipping and sliding and he was the only one and he was driving two miles an hour. Yeah, there have been a lot of wrecks uh, all across the area, minor and major accidents and a number of closings which we'll tell you about in a little bit. Tell us about the weather right now. Well, it's, <laughs> I think we can expect this system to continue with us until about two or three this afternoon. I've been on the phone with the weather service and we're sort of all in agreement that the system is moving east at about 35 miles an hour, which means it is moving away from us. It is moving towards